welcome to Cause and Effect, a show about Vietas. Uh, today we're going to talk about the card Madness Network and the different way to abuse it. Uh, but first, as always, I would like to uh, start with uh, introducing my co-hosts, Adam Esbjörnsson. Take a bow. Hello. <laughs> Hello. A bow. <laughs> I was trying, but it's really hard sitting down. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, and uh, of course, uh, Isak Esbjörnsson Bjärmark, you can just say hello. It was hello. And I don't have to bow. Uh, it was a hassle to bow, so we will... Uh, and you should bow. Well, I thought you were more skilled at that than I am. Yes. Anywho, <laughs> before we start uh, with today's uh, subject, which I'm really looking forward to. Uh, I was, as always, I'm going to ask you guys, how has your beat this week been? It's like... Uh, I try to remember. Something it was okay, yeah. if I remember correctly. I don't remember that much. Okay, okay. I pass the questions to Adam. <laughs> uh, yeah, yesterday, uh, first off, I was quite kind of tired, both yesterday and today, so... Uh, I decided to play um, a few Bloodline stick, you might call it, yesterday. I played one game with uh, Blood Brothers, tap lead, only tap lead kind of deck, and a uh, Shattered Gate deck. Uh, what did you do? I got a table split with the Blood Brothers deck, uh, and I got... Uh, I managed to get Shattered Gates out with the Shattered Gate deck, it's a Nurgle <laughs> deck. Uh, and that's the first time I actually got them out, which I didn't win, I think. Hmm. So, uh, Shattered Gate is quite hard to get them out, of course, but they're really strong, it feels like. Uh, if you just manage to pack your deck full enough with sudden reversals, it might just work. But, no. Well, it's a bit of a hassle to get a Captain Infernal and then... <laughs> your entire deck is just getting shut the gates out <laughs> as soon as possible. You don't have r much room for, say, bloat or bleeds or other stuff. Yeah. Yes, that's very true. Anders, how was your uh, week? My week, week been? As usual, no Vitas play for me. I haven't been able to. So that's why I got the itch to go down to Gothenburg. So now I'm actually at the same place as you guys are. I'm at the second place. Yes, <laughs> I'm at Isak's apartment, but I'm in the living room for sound issues. No, no, so. you've been banished. Oh, sleep on the sofa. <laughs> <laughs> so I know, I hope to get some play done this week, and uh, so I have something to talk about this segment next week. Uh, for how was your, yeah, also, did you, play, uh, did you talk a little bit about your tournament in Denmark last time? Uh, no, we last time we just did the straight journalistic work, okay. the interview with Johannes. Felt really uncomfortable doing like, <laughs> the <a> tournament reporting <laughs> without you, you know. <laughs> of course. But, so, uh, how was the tournament in Denmark? I'm anxious to, to know. Uh, it was great. Uh, like the event and the people and the, the all the stuff outside of it was really really awesome. Uh, just to start with, and then. Uh, it was a really smooth organization, there were a lot of people, there were uh, people from the UK, Germany, Sweden. I think that at one point might have been more Swedes than Danes, uh, which was kind of hilarious. But, so it was really great. I got to meet some the Swedish Swedish players I've never met before, so it was, it was great. But the tournament themselves were really, really great and very weird. They were more uh, EC-like uh, than the tournaments that I've been going to lately in Sweden. That sense that... Uh, the EC is kind of unpredictable and... Uh, I don't know how to put this, but the people tend to play a very safe game and pack uh, defense in almost every deck they play, some intercept and some bounce, so the, all the decks turn out toolbox-ish. And uh, all of them have villain yeah. for everything. Yeah, so the whole tournament were very restricted, uh, which was... I, I, you have to uh, account for that when you go to tournament, that it's not... <laughs> this is uh, like a metagame thing, 
was, so it, in essence, there were like it was like a mini uh, EC when it came to the meta game, and this led to very few game wins being distributed. So you didn't have to go uh, get so much to get to the finals. Okay. I think it was so one game win five for the fifth place in the finals. That's like uh, with 33 players. Oh, oh. That's normally what you see with, say, 15 players. Yeah. yeah. So it's really a few game wins. So uh, just for the short points, how did you guys do in the tournament? Adam? Um, I got... A well, for the first tournament, I had a really, really good chance at winning. And uh, you played? Uh, Anson, Celerity, Guns. Yeah. Uh, cool. With the... Uh, no, with the Weenies, not with the uh, AAA Crypt. Okay. So, Volker uh, and some Celerity Weenies. But did you play Asher Tablets and... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Lots yeah. of Asher Tablets and lots of uh, Inferno Pursuits. Yeah. Uh, so I managed to got, get first seed, and there was, uh, say, seven minutes left on the game, on the finals, when uh, uh, I was being bled, and at some point during that, no, sorry, I wasn't being bled, my grandpa was bleeding, and I was being bounced to. At some point during that bleeding, my grandpa decided to rush me. Okay. Across the table, and that one rush made all these action, I had to block one more than I could take. So, so I like I lost by the margin of that rush. I was felt really, really disappointed to be so close to winning and since there was yeah. no one ousted by then and there was like seven minutes left. Uh, it was uh, really, really close to winning. Yeah, there were basically there were a cross table rush that was kind of uncalled for. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we had no uh, beef. <laughs> <laughs> during any part of the game, we were like non-involvement, and then uh, I was being rushed at that point. And it felt really, really bad because I was just giving the game win to that player's prey. Well, that's the that's the beauty and the horror of Vitas. There's always you can always be rushed cross table. Yeah. yeah. So uh, how do you, how do you do, Isaac? Uh, first day, I were the worst. Uh, Swede, or at least the Swede from the middle of Sweden, mid Swede, Swede. <laughs> so I've got to be named Apache Jones for a week on Facebook. <laughs> uh, with a picture. <laughs> yes, with Apache Jones picture as well, as some of you have, may have noticed. Uh, but the second day I did a lot better. Uh, I got to the finals, and in the finals I, I had a, I managed to get an early VP, had a decent shot of actually getting to win the finals, but. Well, wasn't enough. Some circumstances, um, some tactical decisions that wasn't the best. But all in all, uh, it was really great. Going to the finals in the, like, the Danish Nationals, the 22-player tournament was great. So it was kind of, a, to summarize for you guys, Denmark was close but no cigar. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. So, uh, on that subject of cigars and smoking, I would like to talk to you about smoking mirrors. And a card that the um, Malkavian clan uses could be smoking mirrors. And when we're talking about the Malkavians, we should also talk about the card <laughs> Madness Network, which is a Malkavian clan card. <laughs> I agree. Okay, I'm bringing up smoking mirrors here. That was really, really smooth. Yeah, <laughs> smooth transition. <laughs> Yeah, thanks a lot. Uh, are you a journalist? <laughs> well, yes, I am. <laughs> so, um, yeah, today's subject, main subject is uh, is Madness Network and uh, different takes on the decks and how to abuse it. So we'll start out by light abuse, then a little bit worse abuse, and the worst kind of possible abuse. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Shoot so it up so the arm? arm or yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah. Anyway, it's kind of a quirky card. You c you could say it's kind of different from the many other cards in the game. Mm -hmm. Do you do you remember your first impressions when you first saw the game, uh, the card in play, Isaac? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I was kind of baffled. I didn't really. I've heard I'd heard from about it through the grapevine, but I hadn't really registered in my mind. When I saw it, it was like, so you can bleed five times each turn. 
That's broken. <laughs> well, and um, I have been playing a lot of Madness Network ever since. Well, the first time I saw it, f at least, was I was like, "What? Why? Why would I? What's the benefit?" I guess they untap and take one action later. So uh, my first impressions were like one of puzzlement more than amazement. Why would I use this? Yeah, 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 exactly. Uh, but then that was was you looking at it, not you seeing someone else play it. Yeah, yeah, it was of course yeah. just yeah. going through the checklist, you know, from start do to finish. You, do you remember what kind of deck that used it the first time you saw it? And have you? Uh, I think there was some kind of Morris trick deck, maybe uh, something that were able to play second edition, I think. I don't remember. This was back when I was uh, a Beatus retard. <laughs> My first experience was a Rachel deck. At the tournament. We'll be getting into Rachel deck a little bit later. Um, yeah, so... Any, uh, any entri introducing other thoughts about the cards before we go into depths? Um, the card is incredibly strong. Like, the effect be able to take, theoretically, that is five bleeds, say bleeds to yeah. per minion per uh, lap around the table, but it's so, it's a very balanced uh, cost contra benefit, so that's, it's a very beautiful design. Some of the cards from the early sets are very badly designed, I think, uh, from like an interesting point of view, but this is one of those power cards that's very interesting design. So I really do love seeing this card in play and seeing it played. It's strong, but very balanced, I think. Yeah. Uh, one interesting as as uh, aspect of this card, uh, I think, like we, we played one game a long time ago when we had like four Malkavian uh, decks on the table, and then Malkavian Time, a uh, little Malkavian... Uh, Madness Network. Madness Network, thank you. Uh, come into play, and it's like, it takes a lot of time as well. Yeah, and the game becomes a uh, with the weird yeah, with the madness network with uh, Malkavians out like that. It becomes so much different. Uh, I think in a good way because it's fun to play like that, but it takes a lot of time to actually like technically understand it because you're so not used to a situation where lots of people are passing up uh, passing the impulse to each other and what's strategically sound in a situation like that. So yeah. when we started playing Madness Network, uh, it took a lot of time from us and we made a lot of bad decisions during casual games. But yeah. I think we learned a lot from it because uh, now the impulse comes more naturally and it's more easy to understand uh, what the benefit of staying untapped and waiting to pass the impulse is and uh, making risk calculations like, okay, maybe I'll wait one turn to take an action, but if you do decide to wait one turn, what happens if that player is ousted? You've yeah. lost an action. Uh, so lots of these different things come together uh, when trying to make decisions of whether or not to act during other players' turns or waiting or trying to untap. Yeah. 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 Uh, interesting. It can be very time-consuming, as you mentioned. It all depends on uh, experience. Yeah. And not overthinking. <laughs> So, yeah, uh, I should probably mention, uh, we are not going to talk about the standard uh, block deck, which features, uh, <coughs> sorry, I have just a blank spot with this card name, um, Madness. Uh, <laughs> Madness Network. Uh, we talked about that earlier in episode uh, 7 in the season 1 with Pascal, so if you want to know more about that deck, I suggest you go back and watch that episode. But we are going to talk about uh, some different decks and we are going to start with uh, a deck called White House uh, which uh, features Lu uh, Lucian. Yeah. It's like, would you bring us in? Yeah, uh, so as kind of obvious from the remove clause on Madness Network, you always want to play uh, a uh, somewhat defensive deck. So, this is a deck that tries to play 
defensively and offensively at the same time. Uh, but just having the bare minimum of surviving, uh, or less, or maybe not the bare minimum, but at least a minimum in survival uh, to try to survive and defend the Manus network, and then ditch out as much pool damage as physically possible during other players' turns. Okay. Uh, so this is Malkavian 94, but the crypt with titles. Uh, Lucian, Gilbert Dwayne, and Gilgay Andersson. Um, the basic idea is to bring out the f fattest guy first, to govern down in the medium time, uh, try to survive, and use second tradition of, and obedience uh, to defend uh, Madness Network, to defend against combat, and to get extra actions. And this is like the, the key of this deck, uh, or at least w if we're talking Madness Network. Uh, so the key is uh, that you stand up uh, untapped after you played obedience, and therefore you gain an additional action out of turn. Okay. So you, would you say that this tech has become more like a meta game worse as more people are starting to use uh, more ICs? Adam? Uh, sure, every vote deck uh, that isn't an IC deck in itself uh, becomes a bit worse. But uh, also the obedience part. Oh right, obedience, of course. Uh, well, uh, most obe uh, most inner circles do play obfuscate. At least the good ones, like the one you see a lot, mm. they play obfuscate. So if you fail to block uh, with this deck, uh, you're still untapped from second obedience, the second tradition. Yeah. Uh, which actually makes me a bit surprised that there aren't any deflections in this deck. Because deflection make you be able to stay on tap. So if you're being bled, you play second. You fail to block, uh, you can play uh, yeah. deflection. Uh, so I'm not too worried about inner circles. They're kind of fine, I think, with a deck like this. Okay. The biggest problem if if you face someone who wants to beat the living crap out of you, uh, that's the who's playing high caps. Because then you play second tradition, attempt to block, and then you're just happy to rip your part. And then you get ripped apart, and your combat defense is obedience, and obedience requires the rush er, to be uh, yeah. younger. So, uh, yeah, are there like, more key points here? You just. Uh, yeah, it's uh, the governs and the paired shifts. Yeah, it's uh, a lot of. Maybe yeah, m maybe that's why it doesn't pack any. I was just thinking about the deflections. Yeah, six parity shifts. So there are bounds in the deck, uh, nine of them, uh, but there are also bounds. Yeah, uh, yeah, true. So there might be like uh, I don't know meta game choices or, or so expecting more uh, uh, stealth uh, yeah. than I maybe would be expecting, and therefore. Uh, opt to go for the Auspex bounce. They're also better in the uh, heads up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, and basically it's trying to use second obedience both as a defensive strategy but also as an offensive strategy in the sense that it gives you additional actions yeah. uh, out of turn through Man's Network. Okay, so yeah, uh, but is there is like really... Is Madness Network really a suitable for this deck? I think what uh, helps this deck so much is that uh, second tradition obedience is a good combo of cards even without madness network like blocking uh, second tradition is one of the most efficient cards in the game uh, in a way blocking with two uh, untapping and two intercept in the same card is really strong uh, and obedience is totally valid combat defense and it, you can still cycle it even if you're not facing combat so uh, for a gain uh, you're not losing blood when you're blocking with obedience so you save a few blood from that uh, just adding three madness network on top of a Malk 94 deck that already has obfuscate and dominate it's not a, you know, an investment really it just gives you a few extra actions during the entire game it's just a little bit of extra oomph yeah like a big case of why not add a three of them uh, okay. <laughs> because of uh, 
just it's a good if removing the three matters network you still have a <coughs> parity shift stealthy deck adding the three matters network you get more actions out of the same deck more or less yeah and also there are some additional benefits with playing parity shift out of turn uh, say if you choose to play a parity shift on your praise turn uh, he hasn't had the opportunity to transfer four of his pool yet so it's more likely that he or she will be in higher pole total than you, so there will be a window for you to use pair shift, which yeah, might, like not, might not have it existed otherwise. Yeah, should is that, al that also might be better now when people are playing more lanes, lane for a lot, and then just yeah, exactly. Yeah. Before they get to transfer that on, and also your own bill lanes <coughs> make you be able to play, uh, say, first vampire with dissolution. Uh, next turn you play Madness Network, you govern down, you bring out Gilbert. Gilbert is untapped at that point. And before yeah. you get to Villain, end of your two vampires, you can play a pair shift with Gilbert. So you can both Villain and pair shift, which is normally not viable, because Villain makes you unable to play pair shift in most situations. Uh, with uh, Madness Network it's so much more likely that you're actually able to get both of them off. Yeah, yes. Another thing that should not be uh, 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 ignored is that you end up getting the edge in your untap phase more often than not. Since you can elect to save uh, your actions until your predator's turn, and I choose to bleed in your predator's turn. Yeah, and then yes, this, uh, this deck has one copy of Victoria. Victoria, yeah. yeah Vic which is uh, which is awesome uh, with the edge, of course, with her special. Yeah, uh, uh, you, uh, you might. Start, it's only one copy, so it's n nothing to rely yeah. on. But if you manage to get her, it's great. Yeah. He, she will pay back her cost so fast. Yeah, yeah I, I would probably double up on Victoria, but that's just uh, me. Mm. Yeah, with with three madness network in the deck, it would definitely not hurt. Yeah, of course. Exactly. She's very strong together with the madness. Does she? Do you need to burn the edge for two uh, pool, or does she gain an extra from from the pool? Do you? She burns she the edge for two pool. Yeah. Uh, in untap face, of course. Uh, most of face. Most of face. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> so you can. Whatever. Right, so you could actually gain you gain from the pool, and then you burn it. Yeah, she gets three. Yeah, from the edge with her. Any yeah. other uh, benefit with this deck, or rather, it seems kind of obvious that you add an Ankel Kog to this deck as well, but an Ankel Kog makes even more sense in this deck. Uh, one might think that it's even more nonsensible to include it, but I think it's more sensible, since you already have the second tradition obedience, uh, i.e. a way of being untapped out of turn, without finishing your turn untapped. You get even more... Uh, uh, bang for a buck with the anchor cog yeah. than in an ordinary deck. And you're less reliant on uh, uh, having your madness network in play because most likely you will not be able to block every attempt if someone really puts their mind to removing the madness network. And getting the anchor cog is quite easy. Bleed with Lucian and get it, and you have at least one extra action if you like. Yes. Okay. So what's uh, we talked a lot about its uh, strength now. It has a lot of strengths. Did what's its weaknesses, Adam? Uh, well, it is kind of toolbox in a way. Uh, both playing with crypt acceleration and Madness network leaves you with lots of monsters. Uh, both having a huge reaction package and a huge action package and stealth. Uh, okay. 12 plus 6, that's 18 actions, so lots of actions. Uh, so uh, you might be subjected to a bad draw quite commonly, uh, yeah. which would, could be a problem. Yeah. But on the Is other it hand, if it yeah. flows along nicely, you will be able to play a lot of efficient cards. Uh, three dreams of the swings as well. So. Yeah, uh, that's probably a good, a big reason why they're even in the deck, it's because of you want to discard lots of cards, most likely. Okay. 
uh, my experience with this deck is that particularly with Adam highlights here is the biggest problem, uh, the card flow, because it's a pain in the ass. It's so obvious that obfuscate dominate all specs and having being able to access Camarilla titles ought to be the strongest combination in the game. Uh, and it might be the strongest combination in the game, but you get very limited through uh, bad hand jam and a bit awkward crypt, uh, though the crypt is great, which is a paradox in itself. I tend to include more card cycling stuff. Uh, my latest iteration of this actually put a uh, distraction. Since you have Didemayers, Victoria, Zoe, and Lucian, all of them have uh, inferior celerity so they can uh, pay distraction to be uh, to in a big uh, to a big extent become the master of your deck. Uh, I will also couldn't you play uh, aura reading if you're blocking? It's probably not sensible since you're playing obedience. You will never actually enter combat. Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry. I thought so that's probably not a good idea. I think. Uh, right. I've been playing around in my head with uh, playing Magic of the Smith in this deck and Heart of Nichitus. It also makes sense because Lucian have inferior uh, thematurgy and Lady uh, Maria and Lady Thunder also have inferior thematurgy. So uh, by playing Magic of the Smith, Heart of Nichitus, and maybe Bow of or something like that, you get to be an even more efficient blocker and you have the card cycling stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. So with all that going around, with Dreams, Distraction, and Heart of Nichitas, I think you will have enough card checking stuff to actually master the issues of this deck, uh, i.e. the bad hand jam. Because uh, you that listen might think that this is me just whining about the really strong archetype or a strong deck, but it actually is a problem. I've trimmed this to 60 cards, I removed all reaction cards, only play action cards, stealth and monsters. And still, I have hand jam issues. Mm -hmm. So, it's, it's really is an issue with this deck, if you really talking high-end tier 1 tournament play. Uh, it's, it's uncomfortable to play with, so this hand cycling stuff is really needed, I think. Okay. Uh, are there any? How do you play against it, Adam? Um, well, first off, you want to be Milkavian. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually not that big of a joke. I think it's a weakness of the deck that uh, uh, lots of times you're forced to either not play the Madden setwork or give other people extractions. It's quite common that there's an untapped uh, Milkavian that you don't control when you're playing Madness Network. Uh, so that's a big of an issue, really. Yeah. But other than that, it's simply to overwhelm the deck in one of its areas. Say, s nine wakes is not that much when you get around to it. It's not a dedicated block deck. It's, it's just like a, a healthy amount of block, not a lot. So trying to out-act it. It's not impossible at all. And the same with the, the stealth might be hard in this particular iteration since it carries lots and lots of stealth. So that's maybe one error that you don't want to do. So but just don't block it. Uh, yeah, or <coughs> well, you need to make a read on your opponent to see how much stealth he has available. But if you read him and or her and think that he or she plays lots of stealth, you probably shouldn't. Uh, and that's a one way to overwhelm and I think actually, uh, is to just not let... Because, like, this deck uh, has a huge investment in stealth card. It's 7, 10, 15, 21 stealth cards. Yeah. Make them dead. You have a really inefficient deck. Okay. Isaac, you big uh, whiner. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the big whiner is going out. Uh, one uh, <laughs> problem that I faced is, as you touched on earlier, the inner circles. So, say you have Lucian and one of the princes in play. Uh, this is the normal look. You have Lucian and one of the princes, and that's five boats. And you face a single inner circle. You play a pair shift, that's your six boats. Uh, if the inner circle player uh, has the edge, since they're playing in an inner circle, he or she probably also have a vote card. So, that's a to total of six cards for the opponent. And you have six boats without the edge you can't get your parachutes through. Uh, then you think, I'll go get the edge. 
So you you pick Lucian, uh, you play a Govern to go and bleed, uh, your prey loses pool because you can't just bleed for one, that is a real waste. So you bleed your prey for uh, three, or you play a condition maybe, and you play, bleed your prey for six. Now you have the edge, but you have more pool than your prey, so you can't play paired shift. This happens m more often than you one might imagine. It sounds really specific, but this scenario happens time and again. One inner circle boat locking you, you need to get the edge. If you get the edge, your prey drops to few pool, to few pool, and you can't play your paired shift. So, but is it like something you can do actively as a player when you're facing this this uh, deck? Try to go down on a long pool uh, to to mess up the parity shift part of the deck, or yeah, that's something you could do. But also be very very wary of where the edge is, and don't give it any lean room uh, when it comes to it. If you constantly deny the paired shift. That is another aspect that is denied. So you never block them, and you <coughs> deny the pair shift. You don't cut any deals with the player yeah. through the edge. You end up with a very bad stealth speed deck. Very, very bad, because there's a lot of dead cards and only fat guys. Something else uh, is... Uh, when talking about the inner circle, uh, the increasing prevalence of them makes a card called Telep pathic vote counting a bit better uh, which is a card that cancels one vampire's votes and this card becomes stronger as uh, there are more inner circles on the table since if you can cancel four votes it's more valuable than if you can cancel two votes with a single card uh, yes. and superior aspects is like readily available with all the pl uh, vampires that can play paired shift anyway so including telepathic vote counting is not a bad idea but it does, uh, it's another action, or it's another card that could uh, divert your deck a bit from uh, the main strategy, or what you want to call it. It's, an, it's just another card. Yeah. yeah. Uh, a uh, middle, <laughs> in the, in the betwi yeah, a it's kind of between a choice could be old friends. Uh, uh. But I think old friends is really, really bad with Mother's Network since yes. do not replace until on top face is uh, can be really, really annoying when you're planning on doing so much during your turn and every other player's turn as well. Yes, yes. So, uh, uh, is it worth uh, when you're playing against this card? Is it uh, this uh, deck? Is it worth taking away the Madness Network? Do they gain so much for it? Do you always need to take it away? Is that? Um, it depends on what you're playing yourself. Um, but to calculate, it's kind of obvious the more minions the Madness Network player got in play, the stronger Madness Network becomes. So that should be taken into account. But you should also count how many actions do you lose. Uh, sometimes it might just be better to gain the edge, as I stated before, to deny the vote capabilities. And try to talk with uh, so someone else has votes on the table. It's also a case of uh, the immediate yield. If there's no vampires of that player untapped, removing the Madness Network is strictly a long-term thing. Uh, if, on the other hand, he has one but untapped since before and just turn out a new one, so and if he plays second obedient with Lucian, he might get three actions from the Madness Network, then it's a bit of a bigger deal, and then it might be more uh, interesting to remove the Madness Network. Yeah, and another part being, if you s if you're not uh, the predator uh, of the the player with the madness network, madness network, you might actually only make him gain more actions if you remove the madness network. Short term, that is. If you target him, you'll have an opportunity to block and play second obedience before it gets to be his predator's turn, and in effect, that ends up him gaining more actions. So that should also be taken into account. Will this give? him an additional uh, amount of actions, and how dangerous will those actions be? So, so, can I have a yes or no? No, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's very situational, how you, you need to assess, and that's probably one of the hard parts we're playing against this deck, because in a way it seems kind of in invincible. It's got actions in every player's turn, it got obedience for combat defense, it got sexual attrition for defense, it got 
a bounce for power bleeds, it got bleed, it's got parachute, it's got sta static boats, it's got etc. etc. You see, but you have to assess every aspect of the of the deck and try to counter it to the best of your abilities. For instance, the example with will targeting the Valus network make him lose actions or make him gain actions? Right. Uh, something that's interesting as well with the inclusion of Madness Network is that this player needs to build a kind of wonky deck. <laughs> uh, 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 what? Wonky. <laughs> it's a bit odd. Uh, okay. uh, because uh, you include lots of actions because you rely on actually getting additional actions. But if you don't yeah. get the Madness Network, you will have too many actions. And if you get the Madness Network and you get to untap lots of times, you might not have enough actions to make efficient use out of all your actions. Uh, so while it could seem that, oh, he has all his vampires untapped now, now that I've acted, he can bleed for six more, or 12 more, or 18 more, that's normally not the case, because uh, this player might have exhausted his action resources already. Yeah. It, it just, it's really basically impossible to make a deck that can bleed for six with stealth uh, say ten times each round yeah so that's another consideration with the deck like this it normally is a bit in like uh, in the middle of the road how many actions you have in a deck like this mm. uh, yeah and that just brings me back to the thought I had before with when you're playing this deck that I think card cycling is probably something that needs to be added to get this uh, to be tier one. Yeah. So, uh, are there any variations of this deck that you would like to highlight for us? Uh, uh, I've tried playing this with first edition uh, with some success. Uh, and uh, the idea is that since you get to act in everybody else's turn, that you don't lose as much from the first edition being played as the other players. In essence, if your prey pays to pool to gain uh, his or her turn, you use his or her turn to uh, act. And then in this way, you get out as the biggest winner in the losing game that is first edition. <laughs> Okay, so uh, how, did, how, how did it work out for you? Uh, I'm having, uh, this is the true card draw problems I'm talking about that I have issues with. Yeah. Uh, I've also tried with uh, Cavalier, uh, the one of the newest uh, archetypes. Well, that, is it. that one is without Madness Network though, isn't it? Uh, yes. Yes, it is. There, with Cavalier. Um, but I guess it kind of goes as a replacement for Madness Network since it gives you extractions. Yeah, or you can com play this and Madness Network. I you do govern. You pay a blood on tap. It gets to be a play star, and you do, do another govern. Mm -hmm. uh, What's so so sorry, Cavalier? You if you perform an action that costs at least one blood, you can pay an additional blood to untap once okay. per turn, and then it's a master card. Uh. Adam. Do you have any uh, variations? Yeah, uh, I played the first edition one as well, but I never got it to work <coughs> either. Uh, in the end, that one actually just became a turbo powered shift deck without Banners Network. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, but I think uh, something that you can vary a lot is uh, uh, your actions in this kind of deck, so, uh, or your cards, the card amounts. Uh, saying this one is a uh, heavy heavy stealther as we already talked about but you can probably change say 10 stealth cards to reaction cards and you might have a more block heavy deck uh, or just more actions and you have a more aggressive but less stable deck uh, and uh, I, I think this could change how, how it plays quite a lot how about playing with uh, with progeny uh, might be an option. Uh, I don't. I think parrot shift is probably an easier way to gain pool. All right. Uh, yeah. There's also this one. Uh, mind rape 
is a good option if you're playing high caps and have superior dominate, as always. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and in this deck, it can be even better because one of the recent issues with uh, with mind rape is that you mind rape some some guy and the owner of that vampire just villain for everything, and through that way forces you to hunt for one and just lose the actual one with no benefit. But you can do it out of turn in your predator's turn and then it comes as a surprise and they can't use the master face action to remove all blood. So that uh, could be a, a strong option when playing this deck. Yeah. Uh, and it's always a good card, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah the it's right circumstances. It's always useful even if it's not out of turn. Yeah. Uh, well, this one as well, uh, which I've seen played at the Gothenburg tournament. Uh, my kid against the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, of course, that's just another, another option for untapping, and it works with the, even the vampires that are not. Um, sorry, that are not princes. Uh, yeah. And I think this deck that I saw was played with the third traditions. The um, my king against the world. This is only your. It's only the vampires you control. It's not. Yeah, same clan and younger. Yeah. It's a waste on the costy side, since you need to pay one blood for each vampire, but... Yeah, of course. Uh, but it might be good to sure. like throw one in for a ousting move. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, well, uh, well anyway, that's, <laughs> that's, a lot, that's a one way to abuse uh, the Madness Network. Uh, in part two, we'll go deeper down the path of abuse and see where the darkness will take us. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, stay tuned for part two. Uh.